This video tutorial is all about immobilized enzymes. Specifically, it looks at the uses of immobilized enzymes in biotechnology and the different methods of immobilization. Some biotechnological processes can be simplified by taking the enzymes out of microorganisms. Enzymes, as hopefully you are all already confidently aware, are large proteins that act on substrates to generate the product. Enzymes are not used up in the reaction and remain in suspension when the reaction has been completed. In an industrial process, this means that the product must be isolated from the enzymes before use, and this can be expensive. Immobilized enzymes are taken out of suspension and held so that they do not mix freely with the substrate. This has several advantages. Firstly, the enzymes do not mix with the product, so extraction costs are lower. The enzymes can be easily reused. A continuous process is made easier as there are no cells requiring nutrients, reproducing and releasing waste products. The enzymes are surrounded by the immobilization matrix, which protects them from extreme conditions. So higher temperatures or a wider pH range can be used without damaging um, or denaturing the enzymes. However, setting up the immobilized enzyme process is more expensive and immobilized enzymes are usually less active than free enzymes, making the process slower. Now there are a variety of different enzyme immobilization techniques. Enzymes can be immobilized by binding them to a surface or simply trapping them so that they cannot enter the substrate solution. Firstly, we're going to look at ad adsorption. Enzyme molecules are bound to a supporting surface by a combination of hydrophobic interactions and ionic links. Suitable surfaces include clay, porous carbon, glass beads, and resins. The enzyme molecules are bound with the active site exposed and accessibility um, to the substrate. How the active site may be slightly distorted by the additional interactions affecting the enzyme activity. The bonding forces are not always strong and enzymes can become detached and leak into the reaction mixture. Secondly, we're gonna look at covalent bonding. Enzyme molecules are bonded to a supporting surface, such as clay, using strong covalent bonding. The enzymes are bonding using a cross-linking agent, which may also link them in a chain. The product of covalent bonding can be expensive and can distort the enzyme active site, reducing its activity. However, the enzymes are much less likely to become detached and therefore less likely to leak into the reaction mixture. Thirdly, entrapment. Enzyme molecules are trapped in a matrix that does not allow free movement. The enzyme molecules are unaffected by entrapment and remain fully active. However, the substrate molecules must diffuse into the entrapment matrix and the product molecules must be able to diffuse out. The method is therefore suitable only for processes where the substrate and product molecules are relatively small. Calcium alginate beads are often used in schools to immobilize enzymes by entrapment. Industrial processes may also use a cellulose mesh. Finally, membrane separation. Enzyme molecules are separated from the reaction mixture by a partially permeable membrane. As in entrapment, the substrate and product molecules must be small enough to pass through the partially permeable membrane by diffusion. This access to the enzyme may limit the reaction rate. Now you need to be familiar with some of the industrial uses of immobilized enzymes. So I'm going to sort of run through um, kind of five or six examples now. The first one being glucose isomerase. 
Glucose isomerase converts glucose to fructose. It's probably the most widely used enzyme because of the number of applications of the syrup produced. It's used to produce high fructose corn syrup, which is much sweeter than sucrose. High fructose corn syrup is usually used in diet foods as less sugar is needed to be added for the equivalent sweetness. It may also be used as a sweetener in foods for diabetics. High fructose corn syrup is cheaper than sucrose and so is widely used in the food industry to replace sucrose, especially in soft drinks, but also in many food processes um, and food processed foods um, such as breakfast cereals, jams, ice cream, yogurts, and even sliced ham. Secondly, we have penicillin acylase. Formation of semi-synthetic penicillins, um, which were first developed during the 1960s, um, is another example of an industrial use of immobilized enzymes. Some penicillin-resistant microorganisms are not resistant to these semi-synthetic penicillins. Thirdly, lactase. So lactase converts lactose to glucose and galactose by hydrolysis. And this is used to produce lactose-free milk. Milk is an important source of calcium, which is needed for strong bones and teeth. People with insufficient calcium in their diets are more likely to develop weak bones or osteoporosis. It is therefore important that people who are lactose intolerant, so they're unable to digest and absorb the lactose in milk, are given calcium supplements or lactose-free milk. Next, we have amino acylase, a hydrolase used to produce pure samples of L-amino acids by removing the acyl group from the nitrogen of an N-acyl amino acid. L-amino acids are used as the building blocks for synthesis of a number of pharmaceutical and agrochemical compounds. They may also be used as additives for human food and animal foodstuffs. Penultimately, we have glucoamylase, which converts um, dextrins to glucose. During the hydrolysis of starch, short polymers of glucose, which are called dextrins, are formed. Hydrolysis by glucoamylase can convert these dextrins to glucose. Glucoamylase can be immobilized on a variety of surfaces and used to digest sources of starch, such as corn. The enzyme is used in a wide range of fermentation processes, including the conversion of starch pulp to alcohol used to produce gas and a whole, an alternative fuel for motor vehicles. It's also used within the food industry to make high fructose corn syrup. Finally, um, nitrile hydratase. This converts um, nitriles to amides. Now, these amides can be polymerized to form polyacrylamide, um, which is a plastic used as a thickener. The most common um, use of polyacrylamide is in the treatment of water. It helps to stick small contaminants together so that they are precipitated or are easy to filter out of the water. Polyacryl laminate is also used in papermaking and to make gel for electrophoresis.